Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to another edition of our program, The Platform. And on our program we are going to be talking today about uh, disability inclusion. And uh, we are pleased to have Bianca Nagat here again, looking all beautiful in this outfit. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, what, what do you call this? <laughs> this is called Glitz and Glamour, I guess. I so see glitz. <laughs> <laughs> Very good to have you here today. Thank you. And uh, with us today is Erin Brown, who is a power triathlon uh, athlete. Uh, she has been on our program a couple of times before. And today we are talking about uh, disability inclusion. Mm -hmm. Good to have you here, Erin. Thank you. It's always great to be on platform. It's always great to be here. Yes. yes. And uh, what do you call this color in your hair? Well, I like to call it platinum. Platinum. <laughs> <laughs> but I give you a little bit of island gal magic. I see, <laughs> yes. I see. Yes, um, you know, uh, several months ago, uh, we uh, had Erin on, and she, of course, uh, talked about... Um, uh, disability uh, training in the Bahamas, and I guess we're going to do some more about that today. Yes? yes. Uh, you, you were practicing for um, the um, Paralympics. Mm -hmm. Yes, how, how is that going? It's going very good. It's going very good. June, as in June 1st of 2019 to 2020, is the qualifying year. So all athletes that are vying for the Olympics and the Paralympics are in high gear competing at U.S. sanctioned events to get qualifying points. So, so how, what are you doing? Lifting weights and things? Well, I don't lift weights because my body mass index, I'm already an uh, Amazonic type of woman, uh -huh. so I don't need to really lift weights. I have a lot of lean muscle that I, that I build, so I do a lot of cardio and an endurance work, but never lifting weights. Mm, yeah. and, and you train where? I train in various places, yeah. and um, I love that, because I'm such an outdoor, solar-powered person. So Fort Charlotte, Montague, the beach, swimming. I don't necessarily go to one gym, because if I be absolutely honest, one gym doesn't have everything that I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I, I'm everywhere. So some people may see me one place one morning, somewhere else, but all of it is included or inclusive in my training for the power You train alone? Most of the times I train alone when it has to do with swimming. And, but I have instructors. I have been able to garner a wonderful support system of instructors who I am their first power athlete. Mm -hmm. like they've never done this before, mm -hmm. but they're so open and so willing to learn. So while I'm training, I'm also teaching them, they're teaching me, we're adapting different um, programming and techniques, and all of that will be used for Paralympic development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. other athletes like me could just come on board and don't have to go through what I'm going through in order to get it going. Now, what events are you planning uh, training for? Swimming, cycling, and running. Swimming, cycling and running yes okay and um you 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 you, you participated in the game in what in some game before it, no never no i've been looking into getting to the in in um endeavor games that's something totally different that, so, that's so so you you have never uh, participated in the game so no not a are game you going to say. qualify how do you know you will qualify for the Paralympics oh this is why they have an international body called the International Triathlon Union and all athletes that are vying for Olympic and Paralympic spots have to be qualified and added to their athletic listing mm. as of January Aaron Brown is there with the Bahamian flag therefore making me the first and the only power triathlete in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. So you did qualify? I qualified as one of the athletes mm -hmm. that, are, that is now entering the qualifying year okay. for the Olympics and the Paralympics. Right, you have I to see. get on their athletic listing okay. in order to do starts inside different places all over the world. Okay. Yes. So how do you um, know that you would eventually qualify for the actual games? Because I'm going to each event that I can that I can afford to go to. Because listen, there are countries that speak no English that I can't even pronounce to share with you. That you go and you compete 
with non-disabled athletes, but we're all in different classifications. For me, being an above the knee amputee, I'm a PST2. So all of the athletes that are like me, one amputation, we're all grouped when it comes to qualifying. Mm -hmm. So if you're a wheelchair user, you're grouped in a different quali a qualification. You might only have one arm or two arms are gone. They're different qualifications, but we compete with non-disabled athletes. Mm. So once you show up, I'm telling you, once you get on the start listing, the biggest thing is getting on the athletic listing. And so when I heard that, when I was, was informed that I'm on the listing, and I actually went online and saw my name and the Bahamian flag, if that isn't enough fuel to get you going, you, I was ecstatic and I knew that I'm heading in the right direction because we have now made a mark even before making it to Tokyo we've made a mark we mm. have a power triathlete mm. yeah so you you are very enthusiastic about these games eh? I'm very enthusiastic about life in general I see that <laughs> <laughs> I see that but were you always like this even prior to your amputation? Yes, and I, I do think that's why I was always considered kind of the eclectic, eccentric, weird, um, worldly thinking. I never was confined to a box. And I contribute that to my parents being in civic service and also in sports. Hmm. So I had a really good grounding. And even in, in the political arena, I have, I have a really good grounding and awareness of what life is is can be and i've traveled a lot and seen how inclusive businesses and spaces and nations are growing their wealth their their gdp everything just by being inclusive we can do this here in the mm -hmm. commonwealth mm -hmm. so i i'm in mm -hmm. i'm in i'm enthusiastic but all of it so when you tell me no mr jones no justice make me say okay so we're gonna have this conversation again yeah, I probably asked you before um, when you realized uh, uh, you well, you discovered you had cancer, right? mm -hmm. and um, when you were told that you had to have an amputation. Right. Uh, given your bubbly personality, uh, the level of ebullience, mm -hmm. um, how did you how did you take that? I took it for exactly what it was. Um, after watching my mom pass, she passed when I was 17 from lupus. She was everything that you see I am, maybe more. And to her last breath, she was taken away by lupus. And so when I was going through it, I remembered so much of that. So much of being there with her and experiencing that with her. That is what I held on to when I was diagnosed. A lot of the things that we spoke about, a lot of the things that as a child, because I had a child, so I felt like, like, like my life had literally turned where I was now my mom and my child was now me. And I knew what I wanted to impact on my child because I knew what my mom impacted on me. And I was just ready to fight. I just wanted to know one thing, what is the plan? I, that's all I was concerned about. And because I have this type of, of feeling, I've been to psychiatrists. I've been asked if I really, truly understand what's going on because I've never had the, the average or the, the normal um, interaction or response to hearing your stage four. You have bone cancer. Um, it's so big, you might lose your life. I, and none of my responses was ever what you normally or typically hear. Mm. So I find it humorous that in this lifetime, for the rest of my life, I'm an amputee. The leg's not going to grow back. The story, the narrative will not change in that aspect that I'm an amputee. But I have so much that I can give being an amputee mm -hmm. and being able to, to have persons like you and Bianca, who is just so willing to have this conversation and to really dive deep into it, I'm not stopping. I think that you're a remarkable advocate for people living with disabilities. Thank you. You've really taught me a lot, and I've seen you firsthand mm -hmm. inspire other people, you know, and it's nice to just have somebody that 
that you lead by example, mm -hmm. and also if they're feeling, anybody's feeling discouraged, and anybody, including myself, when I'm feeling discouraged, then you just say, it's okay, you can do this. Take that next step, you know. Um, don't care what other people think. Go out on the edge, and if you fail, try again. You're really a living example of that. Bianca, if you fail, try again. I, I feel like I fail big. No, I fail large, and I'm not afraid to do that, because sometimes I, I fail in front of persons, mm -hmm. in front of the whole public. I fail, and I have to be okay with failing and, and realizing that I did not fail and give up. I'm now learning. I've learned something about myself. And the one thing that I would definitely impress on everybody, you have to really become comfortable with yourself. It's not really caring about what this one thing or what society tells you that you need to do. You have to be comfortable that what you are doing, because whether you're an amputee, a person with a disability, we will all have challenges. We will all have those moments that we don't believe in what we're doing, or we feel like we don't have the adequate, adequate skill. We do, mm -hmm. but it's so hidden under all that um, criticism and, on, and self doubt. If you start to peel those away, you will feel it like coming out and you have no choice but to spill that over the person. That's right, and how will you ever know if you don't try? Right? Is there a, a cutoff time for this uh, triathlon? Has mm -hmm. that already passed, or can people, other people, still try to apply to compete in this in, in 20, the power triathlon? Twenty. Okay. Yes. So, I would say for twenty twenty, yes, it's cut off. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a wonderful opportunity to now train with me, train with the system that is being developed, mm -hmm. so that. 2020 is an experience that you will now have. So when 2024 comes, mm -hmm. you're definitely more prepared. You know exactly what you need. Um, for me, my shoulders are really, really broad. And so a lot of the things that I'm dealing with right now, and a lot of it is just not good things or positive things that will keep you moving forward. But I see it as positive and everything is fueled. At mm -hmm. this point, I've made a decision. I don't care what the response is, everything is fuel because I'm not just doing this for me. This is a na this is our nation. Yes. Like our flag. I want you to understand. For years, from the inception of the Paralympics, we did not have our flag under the power triathlete mm -hmm. discipline. Mm -hmm. We now do. Right, and congratulations. This Thank is so you. exciting that, that you are representing the Bahamas in this. And I'm representing all of us. And that's yes. why I want us to really, I really want to continue to have this conversation that disability is about us. Mm -hmm. Disability is about you. Mm -hmm. Disability is about you. It's about us. Because once again, if you're not, if you, if you live this life and nothing happens, you, you, nothing happens and you don't become a disabled person or you don't join the disabled community, age will dictate that you're going to need everything that disability requires. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to need these things. So you're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for Aaron. You're doing it for you. Right. And you're doing it for all of these other persons in this community that need it now, mm -hmm. even though you may need it later. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot to really do it. No, right? it doesn't. Once you understand it. And, and this is why I, I made the comment, sometimes when you have the word disability, everyone goes, oh, gosh, what am I going to do? That's too expensive. It's so big. It's so scary. Each person plays a role in disability. Mm -hmm. Each person, just as in life. And so what you would want to do is first sit down and say, well, how can I contribute or affect the disability market or disability inclusion or being inclusive. So if you're in a field in education or if you have a business or you have a service, start there. You don't have to take on the whole thing. Because even me, I live this. So essentially, I take on the whole thing <laughs> subconsciously mm -hmm. before I take it on consciously. Mm -hmm. So we wanna, I want to have the conversations where it's more bite size and persons can hold on to tips and things that can really, they can sit down and digest and say, hmm, this is what I want to ask about because I want to do this. That's okay, it. let's take a break here on our program. Erin uh, Brown, uh, who is trying um, training mm -hmm. for the Paralympic Games, uh, our guest today. We'll come right back. Mm -hmm. 